This video is sponsored by Squarespace, your one-stop shop for creating and managing your own brand online. But more on that later in the video. Hello everybody, glad you can make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. I have zero idea what I'm calling this video. I have no idea. Don't worry because by the time you see this, I fixed it. But essentially today, I would like to talk about my top 10 really unusual aroids that won't break the bank. I would describe the plants in today's video as unusual, not very easy to find. So this isn't something that's going to be in a garden center necessarily. You're going to have to dig a little bit. Not often seen in collections. It's not the obvious choice. It's not a complete curveball, but it's a kind of like, oh, what is that? I haven't really seen that before, or I haven't seen that around too much. Tell me what it is. Tell me where you got it from. I really like it. Could you give me a cutting of it? That's the kind of vibe we're going for in this video. So it will be unusual. It will definitely be stuff that isn't often seen in collections, but it's not something that's absolutely going to destroy your wallet if you try and look for it online or wherever else. You may have to look online to find these plants, but it's not going to absolutely destroy you. You get where well, you're picking up what I'm putting down. Good, let's go. The first plant on my list I have to talk about today is none other than the Monstera Deliciosa large form. Now hear me out. I know what you're going to tell me. I know, I know. A lot of you are going to tell me, Kaylee, that's actually quite pricey. I know. And it's probably one of the more pricey ones on this list. If that helps you determine how much you will be spending on the plants in this list. Does that make sense? It's arguably one of the pricey ones. Honestly, I'm not sure why it's pricey. Because if anybody knows anything about these, I'll start by saying it's not just a regular monstera you can get in a box store right or a garden center it's not now there might be some centers that do sell them and you might get lucky that has happened many times that could happen generally speaking it's not sold in garden centers now you're probably thinking yes it is i've seen it a million times so there is a small form and a large form the small form can grow leaves maybe about a foot across maximum the large form can get leaves around about three foot across you feel me a little bit of a difference and trust me if you've seen them in real life the differences are very 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 clear. I don't really know why they're so rare because in the, I think it was definitely the 1970s, basically everyone and their dog had one of these in their houses, like everyone, your your grandma, your auntie, your uncle, they probably have had one or remember grew, growing up with one or something like that in their homes. Everyone had one. A lot of people still do to this day. And the best way to find these plants, quite honestly, I would say is places like eBay, Facebook, things like that. And if you get really, really lucky, right? You can get a really good deal on a plant because somebody selling it is someone that has had that plant for years in their house, right? So you get a really mature one, but also they don't really know that they're in demand a little bit more at the minute. So you're probably going to get a really good deal because a lot of people would just sell these for like nothing at all. So the price there will vary on where you are in the world and they're not super available. You're not just going to be able to go online and get one straight away for maybe the price that you want. So it does require a little bit of hunting, but I think that's the fun part. And honestly, are they worth it? Yes, 100%. If anyone's seen mine, they know how awesome mine is. You need the space. You need the space. But if you've got the space, go for it. You will not regret it. And it could be a really fun hunt to have. The next plant on my list, some of you are probably going to turn around and tell me that it's pretty boring. But you know what? I never see it in plant collections. Not often anyway. No one seems to really care about it, which means it's not going to break the bank. You know what I mean? It's not going to have a silly price tag, but it is unusual and it does have some really good points. And I've seen a lot more boring plants being had in collections that cost a lot more money. So we're going to put it in. Today, we're going to talk about the Philodendron Subhastatum. Little bit different from the Philodendron Hastatum. The Hastatum is is what is known as a silver sword and that is a lot more available in stores. It's a very very beautiful plant if you want something silver that's your boy. 100%. Also, very cheap. It's been mass produced. But today we're talking about the subhastatum. So the main difference there is obviously the shape is a lot different. It's got a lot more of a very typical paddly philodendron shape. But the underside of the leaves, guys, is blood red. It is blood red. And they are absolutely incredible. I don't understand why these plants aren't loved. I don't see anyone talk about them. I don't see anyone hype them up. But I think it's a really, really nice plant to have. And because it's so easy to probably get a hold of, it's one of the easiest ones in this list, propagating them and giving them to friends and family or just propagating them anyway is just a really good idea and it's really easy to do. It's a plant that's going to give you a lot of chill. Now they're very, very easy to look after. They are climbers, so you're going to want them to climb, but I don't find them to be too
too leggy. It is a plant where you need a little bit more light to keep it more compact or it can get a bit leggy, but they're great little plants. And hey, if you just want to keep little small ones, keep a little small one. I absolutely love these. And I remember I wanted one of these in like 2019 or something. And I think I had one. I think I have some in the shop, but they've never done very well. And I don't know why. Maybe they're just boring for some people, but I had to include it because the undersides of those leaves are amazing. So it had to go in the list. Oh my God, this next plant, literally this next plant. I found one in my shop. I kind of knew I had it, but I ignored it because it was a stump and it's grown out a little bit. And I'm so obsessed. I had to tell everybody about it because it's not a plant that people have. It's not a plant that people talk about, mainly because there are some plants that are similar and I will go into that in a moment. But the next plant I absolutely need to literally hype up is the Philodendron Warswixii. I think that's how you say it, Warswixii. You know, I'm not the best at pronunciation on this channel. Not that it matters, but they this plant, guys, this plant, you've got no idea. One, this plant comes in a different variation. It comes in a yellow form. Now, I don't like that. And I'm not going to talk about that because I just, it's just not for me. I don't like it. If it is for you, awesome. But it's not for me. I want to talk about the green form. Now, there is a plant very, very sort of similar. To be honest, there's a lot of plants that give you this sort of effect. Not as good as this, as you can probably tell. There is Philodendron Selum, I think, or Selum. Don't know how you pronounce it. But there's a much more common version of this kind of vibe. Does that make any sense? This one, I just don't really see. I'm serious. I don't really see it, especially the green version. I see the yellow version around quite a lot, but not the green. So I had to talk about it. I'm looking at a picture on my phone now and the intricacy of these leaves is absolutely breathtaking. And I cannot wait to grow the one I have out and get it really big like this, because this is something quite special. Now, this might not be for everyone, but I think personally it's pretty likable, right? The structure of it when it's large doesn't look that typical for philodendron. It's just a bit like, you know, if it was in a corner and it was taking up a load of room, you'd look at it and be like, oh, what, what is that? You know? So I thought it'd be really, really good because it's just not in many people's collections. I'm so delighted that I have one of these. And when I say I have one of these, by the way, I literally mean I have one of these and it don't look so good, but I'm going to pot it up and we're going to grow it out. I might do it in a repot, but oh, cannot wait. Cannot wait for this plant. If you can find this plant, please buy it and grow it out and get it looking beautiful because that is absolutely stunning. So if you want something really unusual in your collection that will not break the bank and it's not going to cost hundreds, this is your boy. This is a beautiful philodendron. Right, we have another unusual one for you. Now, I thought this was a philodendron. It's not. I think it's actually Thormatophyllum, but I'm going to tell you the two names it goes by, basically, so that if you try looking for it on the internet, you will find it. Although it goes more by the second name than the first name, actually, when I looked. So next on my list, I have to tell you about, and this isn't necessarily for everyone. This is the Philodendron Goldii or the Thormatophyllum Sprucianum. Now, I'm 99% sure it's actually Thormatophyllum Sprucianum, but be because it used to be known as Philodendron Goldii, I'm putting it in there so everyone knows what plant I'm talking about. But I'm pretty sure it's been reclassified as Thormatophyllum. This one is... Ugh. It's so good. But what I will say is, in my opinion, it's good when it's mature. A lot of the other plants on this list, like even the last one we talked about, they look quite cute when they're young. I wouldn't say this one does. I think this one takes a while to get going. So when you've got a mature one, it looks brilliant and it looks like the what I'm showing you now, basically. But if it isn't, it's not that impressive. It looks a little bit weird. So really, it depends on how much you like the mature form and how long you want to wait. Unless, of course, you can buy a fully grown one. That's awesome if you can. Brilliant. Even better. Obviously, it's going to cost more money because it's bigger. But if you can find a more mature one, maybe do it. I never owned this plant, so I don't know how quickly it grows, but it's very, very nice. And I've got to say, the leaves remind me a little bit of spiral ginger. If you've ever seen spiral ginger, I will put in a photograph for you so you know what spiral ginger looks like. It's kind of the same. It's, it's not the same. It's not the same, but it looks similar. And I think if you like one, you're going to like the other. So there's a really random curveball alternative there. Thormatophyllum sprucianum, previously known, I believe, as Philodendron goldii. You can get variegated ones, of course, that cost the earth, but we're not talking about that in this video because today we're going for the less obvious choices, are we not? So buckle up, let's keep going. 
If you're looking for an easy way to build and run your own website, then look no further than Squarespace. Squarespace is your one-stop shop to create your own website from the ground up using a selection of stylish and super customizable templates. It's so quick and easy to edit any one of these templates and make it your own. I don't know if you guys know this, but my website for the Red Plant Shop is actually built from one of these templates. While designing and editing my website, Squarespace allows me to preview what the finished edit looks like on different devices. And this is a really cool feature because what works for a web browser on a laptop doesn't always work for a smartphone. This way I can toggle between different previews and check to make sure my design looks great no matter what device I'm viewing it on. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for yourself or perhaps you're setting up a web shop like mine, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen, save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. The next plant, oh my gosh, the next plant I only knew about because I saw it in a garden center a couple of months ago and I literally thought, what is that? I tried to scour it for a label and I couldn't find anything on it. It just said anthurium on it. It's a type of anthurium, right? And it's taken me a little while. It's taken me a little bit of Googling to find out what it was on the internet, but I found it for you. And this is a really, really unusual anthurium. It is known, I do believe, simply as anthurium arrow. It's not hard to say why though. If you look at this plant, there's a lot There's a lot to like. Maybe for some, there's a lot to dislike. I quite like it. And I do think this looks better in person. The lobes or the, the depth of the sinus or how deep that arrow is on these leaves is insane. It grows in a really solid structure. It's less growing horizontally. It grows quite vertically, to be quite honest with you. The leaves kind of sit upwards like this. There are a couple of plants out there that, that have leaves like this and they almost act as cups, but it's just so so different. And I think if you want an anthurium that is not going to break the bank, it's not a velvety, veiny, whatever, because we've done all that. We don't want that. We want something that's chill, doesn't take up too much of our time, but it's very, very different. And people will come in going, what is that? This is the anthurium for you. And the fact that I found it in a garden center or plant shop, I should say, is a good sign because it means it's tough. You might be able to find it. You might not. I think you can definitely find it online. I just can't guarantee you'd find it walking into a shop. But again, that's what this video is all about. It's about finding the kind of weird stuff that you might have to hunt for a little bit. Let me know what you think about this one because I don't know if people are gonna love it or hate it. Ah, oh, I used to own one of these. Well, I, I sort of do, I'll explain. So the next plant on my list today is the Thor, I can't say it, the Thormatophyllum African Fantasy. I think also it is going on the internet as Thormatophyllum Angela. I'm not sure if Angela refers to the variegated version, but I'm pretty sure it's Thormatophyllum African Fantasy when talking about the all green non-variegated version. Right, this plant again does not get enough press. Now I used to own one of these. If anyone remembers way back when I had one, thought it was awesome. I moved it to my shop when I was downsizing flats. Basically I had a lot less light, a lot less windows. So I had to downsize. So I put it in my shop. It stayed there for about a year and a bit. And then I think my parents quite liked it. My mum liked it and she asked me if she could take it. And I was like, yeah, sure. So I had this plant. I didn't have it as mature as the leaf shape I might be showing you. It was quite young, but I tell you something, even when it was young, Young, the leaves look great and that is something good I can say for this plant. Even if you get a small one you're going to very much enjoy this plant growing out and growing big because at every stage the leaves just look awesome. Honestly they just look awesome and let me tell you how tough this plant is because when it was in my shop it was on a top shelf and if the watering can ran out it probably wouldn't get watered if I was in a hurry. Yes it's one of those plants and I tell you something it still looked great it still looked green. My parents have it now and I think a few of their plants have been underfed a little little bit and this is the only plant in the collection that has kept a really dark green color despite being severely underfed which tells me it can seriously hold its own. It's a very very nice plant. I think it's very underrated. It's possible that with the variegated version coming out that this plant will get more cool if you know what I mean, and we might see it a little bit more. I don't really know, but I think it's a really good one. I can personally attest to how tough it is and kind of how awesome it is. So maybe, just maybe, you should dip your toe into Thormatophyllum a little bit more because obviously this is like, what, the second or third plant on this list. I would maybe look them up because people aren't collecting them enough and I think they should. I think they're great. 
The next plant I have to talk to you about today is arguably one of the more collected ones on this list. So it's, I don't wanna say mainstream, but it's more popular. So it's it's probably more readily available. You might see it in a few more collections than some of the other plants on this list. And that is the Amedrium Zippelianum. Zippelianum. Zipelianum, you decide. You may be familiar with the Amedrium medium that looks a little bit like a Monstera. If you don't, hopefully I've been able to insert a picture for you. I think you get blue and green forms just for your information. But this one is a little bit different, right? It's a little bit different. It's reasonably easy by the fact that it's circulating quite a lot. These ones look adorable when they're small. They look terrific when they're large. So if you kind of like a palm tree kind of vibe, because this is who I'm probably directly speaking to at the minute, those of you that like that kind of tropical vibe. If you like palm trees and things like that, this might be a great plant for you to collect. It's kind of got palm-like leaves in the way that it's kind of got almost fronds, but they kind of grow like this. The leaves hang like this. It's not like a palm where they're more like that. Does this make any sense? They literally like, they grow like this. So all the leaves just kind of hang. A bit like a, a palm crossed with an umbrella. But the thing is, and I looked this up yesterday, I looked up a mature one on the internet and I saw a picture, I'll try and put it in for you. But it was this picture of this plant and it was basically growing up a tree. And it looked like an actual palm tree. It looked terrific. Now I don't think I've ever seen one that mature, but that's fine because I'm judging my entry into this list based off what a young one looks like. And I think the young one looks really great. Now this kind of vibe might not be for everybody, I get that, but hey, it's in here for flavor and I do think it's a really, really nice one. People are collecting them, so they must be kind of good if people are kind of collecting them. It's seen more often in collections, but I wouldn't say it was mainstream at all. So if you want it, you can probably find it online though. I don't think you're going to struggle too much, unlike maybe some of the other plants on this list. Ooh, okay. This is, this is a really Marmite plant and what I mean by Marmite, if people don't know, is it basically Marmite's slogan is you either love it or you hate it. So this plant therefore is a plant that you will either love or hate. If anybody remembers when I talked, well I have talked a lot about the Philodendron UPI and I've always said that plant is a Marmite plant. You either love it or you hate it. Imagine if you will the Epipremnum version of that. And we have today to talk about that I want to just just push your way, just push your way to see if you like it, the Epipremnum skeleton key. Yes, I know. Yes, I know it's weird. Yes, I know. But it's kind of awesome and I don't see it in collections. I don't think it's super expensive either, but I think you might have a little bit of a tough time finding it. But I think that's part of the fun of plant hunting, right? Yeah, it's cool going into a garden store and picking up some things that you like on the day, but it's even cooler to hunt for something and find something, right? That's part of the fun of it all. And I think this is a really good one to hunt for. I don't know how many of you can like this and I really need to know in the comments if you do or not, or if I've pushed it too far. If I pushed it too far, you can tell me. I'm not going to be offended. Personally, I don't know. I think I need to see it in person. I might have to find some, you know, and find out. Let me know if there's any interest in this because I will try to source it for you. Oh, I don't know. It's just one of those plants where it's either like, oh, or ew, you know? Like, so comment down below if it's oh, or if it's ew. Listen, I had to throw in a tall curveball, okay? Just just let me have this one, right? It's weird, I know, it's weird. Let me know what you think. Another classic. So the next plant today on my list is the Philodendron Golden Dragon. Yes, I used to have one. Yes, I sold it. Am I over it? Absolutely not at all. I wish I hadn't because this plant is awesome. And I saw a plant uh, yesterday when I was looking for plants for this video and I think it was a large one and it looked amazing. It just looked amazing. So I will tell you straight off the bat that there is a narrow version of this plant. It gets confused a lot with a really rare plant, so be really careful. It gets confused with Philodendron Longadol Bar bottom too much, way too much. So there is a narrow form and there is also something called philodendron lime fiddle, which I think I have in my shop. In my opinion, the lime fiddle aren't as nice as this. They're also a lot more in collections than this. They're a lot more available than this. In my opinion, the golden dragon is harder to get. And I would love to know where they are because I fancy buying one. I know I have the narrow form, but I will probably never get over the fact that I sold this plant. I'm really sad about it, guys. It's another really fancy leaf shape. It looks quite majestic when it's big. 
big. It really does. It's awesome. So if you want something that's a little bit more fanciful, obviously its shape resembles the head of a dragon, hence it's called Golden Dragon, then this one might be for you. It's certainly one for me. I'm pretty sure I have a large one on my wall. Now you're probably thinking, how do you know? How do you not know? I bought it as a really mature plant and I, I just wasn't sure. I think it's on my Instagram actually the day I got it in and I thought, I, I think it's Golden Dragon, but I don't know. It was just sold to me as just, a, here's a picture, do you want this kind of thing from my supplier? And I went, yeah, okay, that's fine. I'm putting things on a wall, so I need something big. I think it's Golden Dragon, but I'm not sure. I need to check my wall, but yeah great plan. If you can find it, I advise you to get it. The narrow form will be more expensive, but in my opinion, there is absolutely zero wrong with this form, and this form will look a little bit more jungly. The narrow form looks a bit more rare and a bit more bougie. This one looks more jungly, so it depends what you want to go for, but another amazing plant. Ooh, last plant on my list is... Oh, honestly, I don't understand why people don't talk about this plant enough. I don't get it. Because, okay, if you are tired, if you are sick and tired of seeing Monstera Deliciosa, large form or small form, you're just sick to death of it. You're sick of Adansonia. You're sick of things like that. You're sick of all your Siltipicanas, your Standalianas, all of that. You're even sick of things like Monstera Eskeletor. It happens. We see them a lot. Have you ever considered the Monstera Penati Partita? Because I tell you something, I used to own one. I say that, I still have it, right? It just looks horrific and I need to grow him back out again to get him back to his former glory. This plant is so unique. It's awesome. So if you imagine a Monstera Deliciosa or an Eskeletal, for example, those plants have holes in, right? This plant will not do that. It will get fenestration, so it will get splits around the leaves, but it won't get any holes, I don't think. Hence the name Panati, Pinate, right? It, it can't get holes in it. Not only that, but it, it grows in a way that I don't know if everyone's going to love, gonna be honest. It can freak some people out. Mine, when I had it, did definitely freak a lot of people out. They didn't love it. So there is possibly an issue there. But if you don't mind it, it's a great plant and it can grow very, very, very compact. And I mean very compact. I'm talking like large form Monstera levels of compact. It doesn't have to be big and viney. I don't really think it needs a pull either. Yes, you can, of course, but I think you can let this one get quite big on its own. And it is absolutely, it's just an incredible plan. Honestly, I don't get it. I don't get why more places aren't selling these. Now you can get these, I think, here and there as smaller plants, but to get a large plant, I think you're going to have to do some digging. The Netherlands used to produce them, um, very, very large plants. That's actually where I got mine from originally. I don't know if they still do. I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. So there might be a little bit of a hunt there, but again, that is the fun part, is it not? And there you have it. There are 10 aroids that aren't too easy to find, but don't break the bank, but aren't often seen in collections, but could really make a great collection. And I think some of these probably might make a comeback, like the Thormatophyllum sprucianum and the African Fantasy as well. Given that there are some variegated ones out there, I think the green ones could make a comeback. But a lot of them on there, I just don't think get enough press. And I think they're fantastic additions to a collection. So hopefully there's something on this list that you've looked at and gone, hey, you know what? I like that and I'm going to go for that. Let me know if any of these have made it onto a wish list or even onto a hmm, I need to see that or I want to look at that more list because it, it really helps me to know that I'm picking things that I think that you will enjoy and that you will want to have. So it really helps me to know that. So please leave a comment. Similarly, if you like this video, please leave me a little like. It really, really helps me out in the good old algorithm. And if you'd like to see any more of my content, then please feel free to check out my channel and hopefully subscribe. That's it for this week's video, guys. Thank you very much for your time and I will see you next week. Bye.